Hey, Daily Dosers, Chris here. Hope you're having a blessed day. Oh, well, thanks. Well, blessings to you. You know what? Some the other day just blessed me and my family. How's it going? We're just so blessed right now. <laughs> Bless you. Have you noticed in Christian circles, we use that B word a lot. We throw around blessings a lot, and I'm not quite sure if we know what it means. We kind of use it as something good has just happened to me. And yet we're about to come into, as I promised last week, a brand new series on the Sermon on the Mount, one of the longest teachings we have recorded of Jesus. It comes from Matthew 5, and it starts with what is known as the Beatitudes, the attitudes we should be. The Beatitudes means the blessed life. And it's that little Greek word, makarios, to be blessed. It really just means happiness, but not the type of American happiness we talk about that comes and goes. It's an inward happiness. How to have an inward happiness and inward joy. Now, right there, can't every one of us say, this is a series I gotta watch daily. This is a series I'm gonna start sending to my friends. I don't know about you, but I just started looking at the calendar and realizing, are the holidays really coming up next month? Is my schedule really starting to double right now in speed and size? I'm running on fumes and now more is even being demanded of me. Financially, I know what the next two months are gonna cost and I am not ready for it, people. And I don't know about you, but I need some inward happiness. I need some joy to get me through this stage and this time of life right now. That is blessings. And what Jesus does in this extended study, he's not talking to people about how to become a Christian. He's talking to followers already. Let me tell you why your life, because you are a follower of Christ, should be different from those who don't believe in Christ right now. He sums it all up with one little word. It's called blessings. Matthew chapter five, let's jump in. Now, when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and he sat down and his disciples, the followers came, not just the 12, this is a much larger group of followers. And he began to teach them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's all we're covering today. Blessed is the poor in spirit. Now, now, right away, let's clear up a couple things. Number one, if you're gonna start on a road of figuring out how to have happiness inside, how to have joy inside that the external life of yours and my schedule can't touch, this is square one. This is where we put our game piece. If we're gonna follow Jesus, you have to start here. And he's gonna build this ladder for us, if you will. Blessed are the poor in spirit. These aren't people with a false sense of humility. These aren't people that go, that's right, I'm just a doormat, I'm nothing, I'm no good. No, you're a liar if you feel that way. God made you, God designed you, and he says you are awesome. You've gotta grasp that truth, but that's not what this is about. Well, blessed are the poor in spirit, but I thought we have the spirit of God in our life. We're not poor in spirit, we have incredible. That's not what it's talking about either. The first step in you and I finding some happiness in our life is understanding we're beggars. Spiritually, I have no assets. Spiritually, I have nothing of my own I can stand on. Spiritually, I cannot come before God and go, look at this, look at this. How awesome am I? And how lucky are you to have a guy like me on your team? No, and that's the problem with some of us in Christianity for a while. Spiritually, we've grown, and we start thinking ourselves as spiritually wealthy. Blessings, happiness start when we come to grips with, I have nothing to offer God. I have nothing on my own to stand on. I am spiritually bankrupt. And yet, that frame of mind makes me an inheritance to millions, makes me an heir to the kingdom of God. When you and I come to the place and realize, God, your forgiveness is free, your grace is free, your mercy is free, because he paid the price I didn't, how do I get it? I beg, I ask, I don't stand on what I've done as Chris and say, give it to me. I ask, I beg, I'm spiritually poor in spirit. I'm bankrupt to say, God, can you give me this? God, would you allow me one more day to have this? God, can I walk in this? He goes, when you can constantly see yourself, not as less than, not as a doormat, but spiritually having nothing to offer God, and you truly don't, then you get the kingdom of heaven. Then all that God is and all that God has in store for us has been given to us. That's where we start this walk with blessings. But hang on, step two comes tomorrow.